What is up, beautiful Bailcast listeners? I'm so happy to be back. I'm so happy that you are listening to us right now or staring at us right now. Um, and a quick little reminder, this is our, um, we're, we're releasing two episodes now moving forward. So February is the first month where we're doing that. Um, and today's going to be the first episode where we do the little experiment where we reach out, like we meaning Bart and myself, we reach out to you guys. And we just ask you, hey, what's going on in your life? Is there anything that's either troubling you or is there something that's exciting that you want to share? Um, and then we look at all those submissions and then we're going to hand select uh, people. It's going to be one person per episode. Uh, and then we're going to either share it, talk about it, try to discuss it if it's a problem. Because um, I feel like when it comes to um, going through either either positive experiences or negative experiences it's always good to share it with the community and unfortunately a lot of us don't have a community so we always feel very isolated and very alone and that can feel like you know if you're going through something bad it can feel 10 times worse because you're just like damn no one's experiencing what i'm experiencing but when you have that community and you can bounce ideas back and forth or just share different schools of thought with each other then it's like not as daunting and you're like wow like it's not that bad. I'm going to get through it. Or if, if it's a victory, it's like, hell yeah, now you have people to party with and celebrate um, and, and share those victories with. So with such a long intro. Hi, Papa. Hi, Ma Bear. <laughs> You're just over here like nodding your head like, yeah. like yep, 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 yep. Anything you want to add to that? Nope. Nice. Well, I'm just excited that this is the episode <laughs> that we talked about from the last episode. Yeah. That is going to be the first one where we get to talk and share about people's stories and we can all kind of learn and chime in and yeah. I don't know and see what happens. And maybe we get to like shed some light on certain things. And there's a lot of things that me and Ma Bear absolutely don't know, but I think we'll never know if we never talk about it. Absolutely. And, and as much as we could talk about it, I think as it's awesome that it's going to be because when we grew up, there's just a lot of things that weren't talked about. And we just yeah. got to figure things out ourselves. When we come to find out, all of us are dealing with the same problems. Yeah. And it's really dope. Like I said, that community. So once we can share it, um, the things don't become like the bad things don't become so bad and the good things become even greater. So it's freaking dope. Um, so these are all fan submitted uh, uh, stories. Uh, and they're all going to be remain anonymous just out of respect to the people submitting. And before I even go into the first one, and sharing their story. I just want to say thank you for anyone that submitted. I absolutely um, admire and am inspired by your courageousness to just be open. Because I mean, yes, we've done we've done a good job where you guys feel like you guys can trust us. But at the end of the day, we're still um, it, it's still a hard thing to open up to, you know, like someone that's not like your close friend or your brother or your sister or your significant other or whatever. So I really appreciate the trust that you guys are giving us in going, Hey, this is what I'm going through. Let, can you guys talk about that? So I really respect and admire that. Um, uh, yeah. And it's very courageous. I look up to that. Okay. You ready to rock? Let's do it. All right. So this is what they wrote. It says, um, I had asked like, hey, is there anything that's troubling you? Make sure to share that. And they wrote this. Moving away from home, I'm 20 and experiencing a lot of anxiety and sadness. Don't know how to move past the anxiety and get excited for university. Had a bad experience previously, which made me drop out. And now I'm low key traumatized about the whole experience. That's really tough. Yeah. So um, I've had a personal experience with this. So, um, when I first went to college, I met a good buddy of mine that I met at, um, my community college. And since we found out that we were going to have similar majors and we wanted to go to transfer to the same four year UCLA, we started having those talks, you know, oh, how cool would it be? We're both from the six to six. Um, it'd be cool to go to, uh, UCLA together and then, if we need to carpool back and forth from home on the weekends, it's not that far. And it was like, cool, this seems really awesome, you know? And and we weren't even going to really move that far. But in L.A., it's really tough to commute to a school. Like, right, we have a lot of traffic. Yeah, like um, at that time, I think I only lived maybe 30 miles away from UCLA. But if you were going to go during regular like hours – like meaning not between the hours of 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. It's going to take you like two hours to get to school. So most people live yeah. somewhere around UCLA and yeah. you walk and even parking's expensive. So a lot of people just lose their car, car in general and then just walk. 
So our first quarter there, uh, me and my roommate, he, we I thought we were having a good time. And then he started to feel um, kind of homesick. You how, know? how soon into moving? I think like the first two weeks. Oh, wow. Um, the first two weeks. Well, the first two weeks, everything was cool. Yeah. He was for sure in honeymoon phase. Loves the school. Um, all the people that went to his high school, he was able to reconnect with because I didn't have any friends. Because keep in mind, I did the military first. So when I went to UCLA, I'm like two years, three years older than everyone there. So I'm a little bit older than him, but him, he was able to immediately, oh, dude, trust me. When you go to UCLA, I already got a bunch of friends here. I'll connect you with some of my friends. And I got connected into, I got plugged into his friends group. So he had actually a much bigger welcoming party than me. So you would think that he would fit right in more. And so he already had friends in the econ uh, departments, biology department. And then after school was over, he was the one that would bring me over to like intramural basketball. Like, let's go play some pickup game basketball because I got friends that play basketball. So I felt like I was being plugged in into him. And so I'm like, oh, cool. Like, this is so cool. I have like a like a UCLA ambassador showing me around. And I didn't know until I think a quarter or two quarters in, I realized he had a really hard time dealing with it and he was homesick what were some, what were some signs so he um started to lose passion in what he was studying and but whereas before he was like all about really it, really passionate and uh when he used to stay over the weekend to experience the school activities he couldn't wait to go home on fridays like the minute it was friday he was done with anything he wanted to go home all the time so i would try to like make plans with him hey you want to go to the beach like we're on the west side santa monica's over there you want to go do this you want to check out sawtell sawtell's like the little tokyo of west la i'm like you want to go do all these things and then he would just start shutting me down over and over and over and i was like wow this is crazy because we almost had like this unspoken pact where like you're gonna come lift with me and then i'll go play basketball with you and then we're just gonna be like these two ucla like bruin brothers type of thing but he started shutting me down and he would uh go home all the time and pretty soon i would start seeing all this stuff slowly just move home like his laundry would be smaller the, the food that he brought and his parents really loved him and took care of him and would make him all kinds of food but just the kitchen like even the seasonings and the spices everything just slowly started going back home and I, I started to realize oh wait he's not living at UCLA going to UCLA anymore he's pretty much living back home and then staying at UCLA the minimal amount and not getting involved in any activities and Finally, he uh, sat me down. He goes, hey, can I talk to you? And it seemed really serious. And I'm like, oh, shoot, what's going on? He goes, hey, I think I'm going to drop out. And Whoa. I'm like, what? And he was like, yeah, man, like, um, you know, I just feel so homesick and I can't even focus on what I want to do. And I'm like, dude, but we live like like 30 miles away from home. Like, how can you be homesick? We're not like even in Pennsylvania. Like, what what is it going on? And then he was just like, I don't know. This is like my first time away from home. And yeah, it is close. I didn't think it was going to hit me this hard. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do with your life? And he goes, well, you know, there's another school that's closer to my house, Cal State LA, and I can actually commute there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to still study the same things. Fast forward to now, he's a practicing pharmacist doing really, really good for himself, still accomplished all his goals. But I just think there is that one hump of maybe being, and what's, what's ironic is now he doesn't even practice in this state. He's in another state, so for sure he doesn't live anywhere near home. So um, I guess what I learned from this situation is sometimes when it's your first time, I think it's completely okay. It's completely normal to feel homesick. And then a lot of times you'll feel down ab about yourself because you're like, I set out to do these goals. But if that's your first time doing it, it might be very daunting and the aftermath might be way more overwhelming than what you uh, anticipated to be. Yeah. I I totally get it because even for me as someone that um, I uh, didn't I wasn't allowed to live uh, like away from home to go to school I, I actually went to Cal State LA which was honestly no more than ten minutes to get yeah. you know from from my home to to school so finally when I had the opportunity to move out on my own and mind you this is what I wanted to do like I couldn't wait to have some freedom because if you like I've explained you know in the past but if you're new here welcome um but also like my i i've just i've always had really strict parents so i could never do anything so of course i'm just like this cage bird like as any opportunity you're gonna let me fly like i'm i'm about it right so now it I, it comes a time where i finally get to live on my own 
I do move day comes. I'm so excited. I've already had my car packed maybe for a week because I can't wait to just leave my home and just explore my immediate vicinity. So um, my dad helps me move everything and it was like the coolest shit ever, right? So I'm finally settled in to, to my new home, which is not, I mean, it's a house, but it's really a room because I can't afford a house. I can afford a room. So I'm in my room and I'm settled in. I remember the first week I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. But immediately was like, holy shit, did I do the right thing? Like, I didn't really have close friends. I was living with strangers. I'm like, damn, like, like, should I have listened to my parents? Like, they didn't want me to move out and live on my own. Why though? They wanted me to like move out when I'm married. Is it because it's going to be scary? Like, should I be scared right now? And like, I started getting it into my own head, you know, like, like, damn, am I, was this the best move? Am I going to be sad? You know, but luckily because I was like that cage bird that was like, fuck, I want to be free. And I really moved in with cool people. Like I was able to snap out of that real quick. But I, like just getting that taste of like, shit, did I do the right thing? Like I get it, you know, and, and being 20, like in your early 20s too, I was probably like 23, 24. So it was a little bit different. Um, but like, yeah, I think, I think um, like one for sure, it's the mindset, you know, like if you're, if you want to just focus on. Did that thought ever come back though? Like after you had friends, would you ever oh, go like. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Oh, so you never was like, no, I need to go back home. You're just like, this freedom's too good. Yeah. Well, I was like, this is what I wanted. And this is what I thought it was going to be like. Yeah. You know, like, yes. It's exactly what you thought it was going to be. Yes. Like. like it is stressful, right? Because I'm not living on campus and I'm not getting financial aid from my parents. Like it's all on me. So the stress definitely came with now. Now, sweetheart, like you're a fucking adult. Like if you if you fuck around and you don't make money, you're going to have to go back home if they let you even go back home, you know? Yeah. So there was that stress about it, but everything else was such a positive that I'm like, I can make this shit work. Like, I'm good. So I never had that thought again. Yeah. You know, but I can see how someone who doesn't come from an environment where they felt so restrained and restricted the way I did. Yeah, he he uh, he loved his family and um, like his his parents were the type where his girlfriend would sleep over all the time, like just super open minded type of parents. So his girlfriend would sleep over all the time. So they already know they'd be fucking. And uh, his mom was young and his dad was young. So they're just very progressive in thinking because uh, even back at the community college, like when we would do like class projects, he would be my partner. So just being able to see that he had no curfew, he can stay out till 2 a.m. Um, it was like it, it, he had one of those homes where it might as well not have parents, you yeah. know, like that's how comfortable it was. So I think because he had, it was so comfortable, he didn't really need to have that urge to kind of have his own wings and fly away. And I think since he was so attached to his family and also his friends, when he went to UCLA, I think he lost both of them. Mm. So I think that really, really um, like hurt him. And yeah, he like was, rocked his world. Yeah. Because some people really need, uh, I'm sure most people want one or the other, you know, or at least one, but he lost both. And even though he had friends from his old high school that were there, they're not like his boys. So it was a little bit different. Yeah. And I think for me, um, the thing that kind of worked in my favor is ever since I was a kid, I kind of didn't really like him, the, my family that I grew up in. So I think, oh, man, I don't even remember, but maybe probably starting when I was maybe like even six or seven, I wished I had a different parents. Jesus. I mean, I wish I had different parents. And I wished um, I lived somewhere else. We had the ugliest house on the block. And my mom would put out all the tackiest shit. I mean, you've seen like there's burnt chopsticks, no dishes matched. She would have these plastic covers on the carpet because we rented out the other uh, three rooms to roommates. So she didn't want to have to like re-carpet the house all the time. So like you name it, everything had saran wrap covered on like the most stereotypical Asian thing you could think of. But She even, wanted to make it last. I get yeah, it. but even more because yeah. we have roommates coming in and out of the house. Yeah. So I have normal friends that live on the street and they have like that, that TV type of suburban family life. So it's a clear comparison. So I couldn't wait to leave. And then when my parents uh, got divorced um, during breaks or during certain months, I would be staying at my dad's and staying at my mom. So I think that was my first initial taste of um, not being at like a really uh, like a stable home all the time. And then I think on top of that, I started getting kicked out of school. So almost every three years, 
I would switch a completely new environment, new classmates. And uh, when I was in my junior year of high school, I got into so much trouble that I got sent away to military school. And so when I got to boarding school, I actually loved it. Even though it's really rigid structure, you got to wake up at like 5.30 a.m. You have to eat when the chow hall is open. You have to wear a uniform. You have to tie a tie every single day. As soon as class is over, you have to put on your PE clothes and walk around. Your, like there's all this structure, but since all the structure made sense to me, I didn't, I wasn't homesick at all. I actually loved the military school way more than my house. And then I think after that, then I had the Marine Corps, which I was in North Carolina and all these other places. So I just had so many, I guess, unstable homes. And so I never, I think my life prepared me to be away from home. So I never felt like homesick at all, ever. This episode of BearCast is brought to you by Manscaped. And I am the first to admit that, yes, I am guilty and I have not shaved my nuts in a while. You're, you're preaching to the choir, baby, because I've seen it. Jesus. I know. And even though I have the new Lawnmower 3.0, I haven't used it yet, but I've used the old one and it worked really good. So I can only imagine how much better this is going to be, especially since it has the light on it, it has the new ceramic blades. So it's not even going to, it's going to be even, I might even try shaving with my left hand, to be honest, just to see if I can nick something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just going to test it. I'm, 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 I'm going to be a daredevil. But okay. anyways, you can see how happy Ma Bear gets. You better use it today. It's freaking Valentine's. Are you trying I to get will. lucky or of what? Of course. Girls love a clean man, okay? okay? Not necessarily baby smooth skin. Yeah. I mean, hey, different feels for different people, but not for me. Yeah. So I'm going to definitely use it tonight with the new ceramic blades. It won't cut my nuts or my, my dick. And if you guys use the code BAW, B-E-A-W at manscaped.com, you get 20% off plus free shipping with this code. So make sure you go get nicely trimmed and increase your chances with your woman. And also, it's just cleaner. Like if you guys train your ass off like me, the last thing you want is a bunch of sweat collecting around your nuts because I felt that like crazy, especially during all this marathon training. The I, I keep sweating and it goes all the way down there and I have a little wet spot. Oh, it's spot. like eyebrows, right? Like, yeah, you know and it collects all of it. Yeah, when you sweat from your forehead and your eyebrow and then you like wipe your eyebrow and there's all this, oh, that stuff. I got all kinds I of... I wouldn't know because I use Womanscaped. I'm just kidding. No. They don't make Womanscaped. <laughs> Maybe they should. <laughs> they should. So, Get in there. Yeah, so go to manscaped.com, 20% <laughs> off with free shipping with the code BAIL, B-E-A-W. Hell yeah, and I support a brand that it has a sense of humor and I love, like the lawnmower, come on, I love that. I love it and they have fragrance for your balls. They have like anti-chafing stuff. I love it. Even though I can't use it, I love it because I still benefit from it. So yeah, do your ladies a favor and your men. Um, No, I absolutely get where you're coming from. I mean, it, it seemed like your environment was pretty bad. I mean, but for this person, they're saying that um, the experience which made them drop out and now it's low-key traumatizing. So that for me is like, it, it, so I'm focusing on the word traumatizing. Like yeah. that's that's a very big, heavy word to use. Like yeah. anything that causes trauma should be something that you should deal with. Well, because they're saying that they've already dropped out once and they're on the verge of having a second time, right? Um, well, it says, had a bad experience previously, which made me drop out. And I'm now I'm low-key traumatized about the whole experience. Yeah. So... Yeah. So they already dropped out once and then like now it. in retrospect, they're like, oh man, I don't know if I could do that again. Right, right. Yeah. So I think what I would suggest is um, you're in your 20s. There's there's this, and I get where you're at because there's you feel like there's this timeline and this race that you have to uh, race in. You know, and I, I remember being 20 and or just even 18 and being like, okay, I'm about to graduate or I just graduated high school. Um, this is what all the adults in my immediate vicinity are doing. This is the steps they took. This is what the, my parents are telling me I need to do. Like, come on, let's go. It's time to make money. Like, that's like the focus now, you know? So, so I get the rush, but really like you're 20. I feel like your mental health is really, really important. Um, and like if, if moving out is something that's causing trauma, I say one, like talk to someone you know, whether that's a professional or someone that you really trust, like a mentor, not not a peer necessarily, because I mean, there's some very mature peers out there, but you kind of want someone with a little bit more experience um, and wisdom that can help you, I guess, change your mindset on what's happening. But for me, you I know, would... it's tough sometimes too. 
like let's say growing up in a minority family, um, you have older brothers and sisters and they've all walked the path. You know, this one went to UPenn, this one went to uh, University of Chicago, this one over here. And then you're the one that barely took like one little step outside of your home and then you're, like, you're freaking out. And then now there's this enormous pressure and you can't even really talk to your siblings yeah. about it because the many yeah. talk like I did it. Why can't you do it? Yeah. And even your parents are rubbing that in your face. That's that's some tough stuff. It is tough. It, it definitely is tough. And I don't know. I, I've kind of always been that rebel, though. And, and I feel like if your immediate home is not something that's going to be safe, you know what I mean? Like mentally, a lot of like your mind controls your world. It really does, you know, and if in your mind you're attacking yourself and that that space is a dark, sad, lonely place, that's the first area you need to be working on, in my personal opinion, um, because if like that, that's how you're going to that's how you're going to feel easily defeated. That's how you're going to feel like the whole world's against you. That's how and that might not even be the case, you know. Because like that example that you just gave about the sisters and the brother and the parents, you know, yeah, I understand it. Yes, it's very true. I've felt it. But again, if we look back in our mind, right, and just how we're perceiving it, if we hear it as an attack, then of course it's an attack, you know. But if we hear it as like, oh, shit, they are really uh, they really want me to succeed. They're really pushing me to be my best and greatest person. You know, they just unfortunately suck at communication. <laughs> they don't know how to speak, you know, in, in a very, very vulnerable, loving, soft way. And a lot of people will not be able to do that. If you can kind of. Yeah, because it sounds like tough love. If they were to, I'm, I'm just making up situations, but if they were to speak to you like that, that's like a very tough love. It's thing. very tough. And it's like, hey, like, come on, get up, strap on your boots, put your big girl panties on. Let's fucking go. And it's like, no way, but wait, like, I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know, and it's. And, it, and it's because they see so much in you that they're pushing you to live that potential that they see that you have. So if you, and that's what I'm talking about. It's just as an example to say like how you perceive it, that's gonna be your truth. And you can, that can either be crippling or it can be super empowering, you know? So unfortunately, I don't know what happened that caused this trauma, but, but hopefully this trauma is something that you can sit with and be like, okay, I need to sit with this, understand it, and see how I can change it to work in my favor. Because right now, it sounds like you're being controlled by it. You the, know, the fact that um, they're saying it's trauma kind of gives me a and the way they're wording it, it gives me a sense that they feel like they let themselves down, and not only let themselves down, maybe let someone else down too. And it, they seem like they're very um, disappointed. In the fact that they couldn't finish and um when i hear stuff like that i feel like this is a possibility but a lot of people also attach success to a physical location or going somewhere mm. so i think like the reason i kind of wanted to bring up uh, my old roommate is his equation in his brain when we're at community college is ucla equals success in bachelor's Bachelor's equals success in pharmacy school. Pharmacy school equals pharmacist equals success. And he has attached very... One pharmacist equals money, which equals success. Success, yeah. So he has very... Um, like rigid. Very, yeah, rigid and already specific things. And I think when things are that specific, it's really easy to let yourself down if you don't achieve them. Not saying that you shouldn't set goals. I think that's really important, but I think also also in the sequence of goals, if you know which one is the one that is the most important and let that be unwavering. Mm. So like when like he's he's probably 30 something now, right? Like similar age to me. When he looks back at it, he's probably chuckling, like, oh, I can't believe I was stressing out so much about UCLA. Cause he ended up going to Cal State LA, still getting a bachelor's in some sort of science, still went to pharmacy school. And who knows, maybe he was even depressed in pharmacy school because he was like, since I didn't come from UCLA, maybe I didn't even go to the pharmacy school that I wanted to go to and my life's over. And then now he owns three homes in another state. It's amazing. Which I'm like, I'm so proud of him, right? Yeah. But I think because he was attaching the, the level of success to the immediate uh, staircase in front of him, that's what happened versus like, you know, someone like my uh, my little cousin. 
she's extremely flexible, right? She just goes, I know I just want to be a dentist. And so that's what I want to do. I want to take help take over my dad's practice. And um, I'm interested in helping people fix their teeth and, and cure their toothache. So originally she came to the States too with my other cousin and she was going to go to community college and then go to um, like a four year and then go to dental school. And that was a sequence. But I think one thing that I admire about her is that she wasn't, she didn't attach her success to, or to any specific step. The, the part where she held the most weight is dental school. Well, so, no, it sounds like I want to take over my parents' practice. Yes, that, that's, that's it. That's the big one. That's the big one, right? So it didn't matter how she got there. That was the most important thing. So I think uh, the minute she was presented with another path, which is go to Poland, and I think they have this like direct six-year program. So one thing that kind of sucks about getting into dental school in America is that after you do your bachelor's, in some weird science that you might not even be passionate about. You have to take the DAT and prepare like this entire like personal statement application and submit it to dental school. And who knows if they even take you. And if they don't, you get stuck with the bachelor's in some weird science. Like me, I have a bachelor's in psychobiology. I don't even know how to use that, you know? But when she found out that she can directly admit into a dental slash like bachelor's program, you cut out that guesswork and uh, and it's accelerated and you could immediately become a dentist if you, in whatever country you want to take the board exam at. She's like, okay, I'll do that. So her ability to be like flexible with that, it was, she was kind of be like more able to roll with the punches. And now she is a practicing dentist and she's about to take over her dad's place. And I think that was one of the biggest differences between my roommate at that time versus like my cousin where they attached a certain thing and they think that all that success depends on that certain thing and when they can't do it they feel traumatized because if you were to ask my roommate like how do you feel now that you're going back and you're, now you're not at ucla he'd probably be like i'm really traumatized too i don't think i'll ever go out of uh out of town for school again yeah wow it's so interesting how the how your mind works versus my mind because yeah. traumatized to me sounds like some traumatic experience it sounds like um, something might have happened to her, whether there was like a roommate or a guy friend or a party. Like, oh, that's true too. That's like an actual trauma. Yeah, like I like when I read traumatizing in school and like anxiety, I'm just like, whoa, like something really rocked her, um, or him. Sorry, I don't even know if it's a guy or a girl, but yeah, some, something really rocked them. Um, that uh is is caused them to drop out you know but like yeah hearing your roommate's experience he dropped out because he was just he, he it was just a whole new environment that he just felt completely alone in yeah um, i think i ruled out maybe trauma like actual trauma because i to me if something really bad happened to you like someone burglarized your room or something you would have you wouldn't you would have less disappointment in yourself because there was like an external factor that's yeah. outside of your control where do you get the disappointment from can you read the question one more time uh, yes, yeah, so it says moving away from home. I'm 20 and I'm experiencing a lot of anxiety and sadness. Don't know how to move past the anxiety and get excited for university. Had a bad experience previously, which made me drop out. And now I'm low key traumatized about the whole experience. Exactly. So she is about to move out one more time and she's feeling there is no she or he. Yeah. So he or she is mm -hmm. about to move out one more time and they're feeling anxious about it because last time it didn't go the way as planned. So they're low key traumatized, not I was traumatized. Oh, I see. So like see. just from me, if I'm reading like the the way gotcha. the words are coming out, it yeah. just sounds like, oh man, it's about to happen again. You know, like yeah. almost like I'm showing up at first day of school again. <laughs> and I remember the last time I had a first day of school, it didn't go the way I wanted to go. And now it's gonna happen again. Yeah. And this is where I'm talking about the mindset, right? And I think we briefly touched on this uh, while we were filming JK News, but what you focus on is what's what you're gonna see, right? So, so this person's experiencing a lot of anxiety and sadness because you're focusing on the past experience, right? So all you're seeing are all the bads and all you're working on is like this d defense, you know, like how can I avoid the all bad? How am I, would it, how am I gonna be able to recognize the all bad so that I can avoid it? Yeah. Man, I gotta keep my eyes open for all the bad. So yeah. all, guess what she's, or what? I don't even know why we keep saying she, uh, but guess what they keep seeing? All bad. All bad, yeah. you know, so. There's not an ounce in their brain that's focusing on positive yeah. things. There's not a single rainbow, not a single yeah. sun or a 
little bird in the brain. Yeah. And I mean, and that's okay. That's normal. We all do it. You know, I've done it. I do it like a lot, you know, but, but I think what's, what's very empowering is now recognizing that you do these patterns and going, wait, okay, wait, I'm getting anxious. Why? Why am I getting anxious? What am I thinking about? And then start walking. Even if you have to talk to yourself out loud or if you have to write it down on a piece of paper and say, okay, wait, what am I anxious about? Okay, I'm anxious about... Um, that gets it out a lot sometimes. Sometimes just writing down I, what I you're actually it. anxious about. I love it. Kind of takes the anxiety out of the brain. Yeah. Or or just creating a list of, of shit. Um, the shit that happened to me in the past that I hated. Okay, and then try to go back to the past. Okay, what did I like about it? And, and create a list and... You might be surprised. You might have more likes than dislikes, yeah. you know, but just get it out of your brain, um, whether that's talking to yourself in the mirror, writing it down and then saying, wait, what is making me anxious? Really? What is making me anxious? Is it because I'm leaving my, you know, my comfortable bed, my beautiful family? What's the anxiety part of it? Am I not going to be? Is it money? Do I have to pay for it by myself? And then now you start taking away the power of all these things that are causing you stress. Because this, this big monster that was living in your head, now you're like, wait, monster, I see you now. I'm going to start stripping you from your fucking power. Yeah. And this is how I'm going to tackle it, you know? And if it's one of those that once you you stare the monster straight in the face where you start going, okay, I'm anxious because I have no friends out here. I'm absolutely alone. If there's an emergency, I have no one to call. No one's going to come to my immediate rescue. Like, check that out. Now we have solutions to these these things that you were anxious about like yeah. that big monster became a lot of little monsters right so it's like oh man i'm so alone okay well before you even move out you can be like okay well university towns are actually really really cool because there's a bunch of like frats or sororities there's clubs there's um athletics there's so many different groups that cater to people that move away from home or just want to have a different friend circle. So there's so many solutions. Um, and and again, this is with the assumption that the trauma is something that's not so grave that like you're you're medicated or like you have to see a professional for it. like I like I'm hoping the trauma is just you know you being like a past circumstance that just kind of scared them. Yeah, I hope it's not that. I just hope it's like something that like it's more in their head. You know, where the reality, it's like, nah, it's chill, yeah. you know? And, and it's like, hopefully you can exercise going like, wait a minute, I'm going to breathe. There's no reason for me to be sad. And then like you were saying, you know, setting, like seeing what the ultimate goal is. Like in your two examples of your cousin and your roommate, the examples were pretty con concrete. You know, the, they one wanted to be a dentist, one wanted to be a pharmacist. I was not those people when I was going to school. I was just the person that I was like, what the fuck can I do to leave my house? Yeah. <laughs> so that was my goal. I didn't have a clear like, I want to be a business owner or I want to be a teacher. Like I was unfortunately not given. Um, yeah, I just didn't know. And that's OK, too. Um, so don't put that pressure on yourself if you don't have this concrete goal that you're after. Like we're all after a really big one, which is we either want to be fucking rich or we want to be fucking happy or we want to meet the love of our life. Like we can start with that. There's think, nothing wrong with that. I think for uh, people that are experiencing any type of anxiety out there or any type of fear, uh, there's this phrase where action is the enemy of fear. Yes. And it's one of my favorite because we all can get scared, you know, and because and you get scared because you don't it's 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 um you're unaware or uncertain of the unknown yes and your imagination goes wild and you're thinking all the possible things where you're gonna you can be in an unfavorable circumstance yeah but and and that happens a lot in business you know a lot of time like every single launch that we have for barbell brigade we don't know how it's gonna do yes it could be something that all the comments look good and when we post it, everyone's happy. All of our friends love it. We drop it and it tanks. And then when it tanks, like our whole staff is dependent on the success of that product, you know? And then now we're like, oh shoot, well, how do we do to get ourselves like out of this hole and all these things? And then when we just sit there and we look at it or when we're just imagining it, it's, it's actually causes a lot of anxiety. But like what Gio is saying, when you're able to start planning, start taking action, it kind of moves it away you know like if you are like oh man i gotta go to school one more time you start writing down one like how am i gonna make my friends um i don't like my clothes are kind of ugly um i don't even know if my hair is in style 
Like you just write all these things down, right? And these are very small examples. We're sure you're not thinking about this. Yeah, but then you can, <laughs> and then you can start finding solutions. Oh, yeah. cool. There's a tennis club. I like tennis. So tennis clubs on Tuesdays, I can do that. Um, oh, I don't have enough money to, like I could see um, mom and dad are breaking the bank to even let me go here. Okay, cool. Like what are some jobs that I can apply for around school or around my apartment? And you once you start, the minute you start finding solutions to the hesitance that you have, you immediately feel better. Even when it comes to business, the minute when we're like, oh man, what are we gonna do this quarter? And we start going, okay, cool, we'll do this. We'll send these things to these ambassadors because these guys, they, their fans love this. And we start creating a plan, you immediately feel better. And this huge daunting task doesn't paralyze you anymore. Yeah. And this applies to anybody feeling any type of anxiety or any type of fear. Yeah, I agree. What was that? What was the quote again? Action. Fear or oh. action is the enemy of fear. I love it. I love it. I think I heard it too. Um, yeah. It's the it's actually a, a widely used phrase in the military. Mm. So like you know like when when they when it's uh, when you're trying to jump off of something or anything like that, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I should do it, versus just going on the count of three, I'm gonna hold your hand. We're both jumping. Yeah. One, two, three. When you, if you just do it. It's done. Yeah. But the more you stay standing, looking over, it just like, ooh, and it becomes this huge thing. Yeah. And the more you think about it, the more anxious that you get, kind of like knowing that you you have to give that speech in front of class tomorrow. Yeah. And Because you're thinking about yeah. the worst things that can happen. Yeah, the more you think about it, the more I'm going to stutter over my words, the more, the more scared you get, right? Yeah. And if you spend like an hour or two thinking about that versus if you're immediately like, you know what? I'm just gonna rehearse the shit out of the speech. If you spend the minute you start memorizing the speech and actually going through an action and taking an action, you're gonna feel better. Even if you just memorize the first paragraph, you're like, oh wow, I feel really comfortable. And even if I don't say it the way I want to, if I fart, I'm still gonna be able to get it out. And you'll already feel better versus imagining this huge daunting task. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, yeah, this is some really solid advice if I have to say so myself. <laughs> no, but I thought it was, I, I, I think we did a great job. I hope um, you're listening and you're getting some information from here. And I'm, I'm really hoping that we're, we're able to connect with you and help you see things clearer. And anyone else out there that's experiencing, um, you know, anxiety moving away from home, like, if it's really that um, that heavy on your heart, I say listen to your heart and stay back. Yeah, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you staying behind. Like you don't have to follow suit. You don't have to follow the herd. Yeah, like it's okay to do your own thing. Like you're not a weirdo. You're not letting anyone down. Like I think you need to watch out for you because who's gonna watch out for you if you don't watch out for you? Yeah, don't uh, marry your success to the intermediary steps. Yes, marry your sex to accomplishing the final goal. And the one uh, final thing is my old roommate, he was doing okay. I think got like a 3.3 at UCLA at the time because he was... Wow, Asian guy. A lot of people are like, that's pretty good. No, no, I'm comparing him to himself. Oh, okay. So he got a 3.3 at UCLA because he wasn't feeling good, right? But he, but he was married to the school, so he just felt he had to force himself through. When he went to Cal State LA, he got a 3. Point, I think 8. Okay. I don't know if that's better. 3.8? I know, Compared I just don't 3. know. 3? I thought 3.3 was already good and you're like, he's no. doing okay. 3, I'm so like, 3.8 means <laughs> oh, wow, all, he's failing. <laughs> all A's except for like one B. Oh, okay. So, he so put is, him, that, is that okay? So he smashed it. Nice. So if you think about it that way, just because he put himself back in an environment where he's more comfortable, he smashed it. And yes. What's more conducive to his final goal of becoming a pharmacist? Yeah. You know? Uh, so that's why uh, don't get married to the intermediary steps. Be married to your goal and let that be unwavering, but find the most comfortable way for you to achieve your success and you're going to have way less stress. Yes. yes. I love that. And I couldn't agree more. Um, yes. If you guys like the series, hit us up in the DMs. Uh, follow Bart uh, on his Instagram at Bart Kwan or me, uh, Geo underscore Antoinette. And yeah, shoot us a DM and be like, yo, I love that. And then keep on the lookout if you loved it. Keep on the lookout for uh, one of us to post, um, hey, it's that time again. Send us your stories, your concerns, your victories. And we want to share them and talk about them the way we just did now. Um, we're going to do this series uh, once a week, depending on the feedback. If you guys love it, we'll continue it. If you don't, we'll scrap it. No sweat because we're not married to it either. 
Um, but yeah, I hope you guys got some value out of this because I definitely enjoyed talking about this because it makes me exercise different parts of my brain and going, hmm, did I experience that or whatever? You know, so it's really cool. I, I really do enjoy it. Um, but before we go, I definitely want to shout out our sponsor, Manscaped. Uh, remember that you're going to get 20% off and free shipping with code BAIL, B-E-A-W at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping and uh, at manscaped.com. Use code BAIL, B-E-A-W. And of course, don't forget that uh, Bart and I, we own a fitness apparel and a gym brand called Barbell Brigade. Check it out. Um, it's an awesome gym if you're in the LA area, if you're just gonna be visiting the LA area and you wanna get a really solid workout in with some dope ass vibes, some dope ass community and some banging ass music, stop by. If you can't, but you still wanna rep it and you freaking live and vibe off of our our motto, dominate humbly, which means you're fucking kicking ass in what you're doing, but you're not being an asshole about it. Um, we also do have a supplement line, first of which is um, our pre-workout. It's honestly, hands down, I'm not saying this just because I own it. Um, and Pablo created it, but it's the best tasting pre-workout that I've ever tasted in my life. And all the ingredients in there are freaking top notch. So thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you guys so much. Happy Valentine's again. Uh, big kisses because it's Valentine's and see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.